Hello, this is Gonzalo from the Human Doc Team answering another Ask the Trainer question. Aloha, my six-month-old Great Dane seems to have separation anxiety, whether it's leaving the room for five minutes or if I have to go to work. She starts to bark consistently throughout that time. Any tips on the bark? Some of the things I've tried is leaving the Kong toys in her kennel, but she seems uninterested when she's alone. I have a fur bow to check in with her. I've tried to quiet her with either my voice or some treats through the video camera. I've also noticed that any time we're with her, she's okay, but she has a tendency to ignore me as long as she knows where I am or if she's distracted by another dog. Okay, so there's a few issues that we have to um, acknowledge here. Number one, whether it's that you're training a dog to be in a crate or that you're training a dog to be um, just in a, in a bed or in a place command, I call it a place command, usually I use an elevated bed, it's all the same. We have to teach them that when we place them somewhere, they have to stay quietly there, right? If we rush it too quickly and put them in a crate, we're going to run into a bunch of problems later. So what I do, number one, is I train them to love the crate. That's number one. And how we do that is I train them to um, stay put, usually on a dog bed or on a towel, and we race up the duration. We race up the distance that we walk away. We don't do it all at once. You can tie them to something. This is really helpful and practice bringing food to them for staying put. I have this on my website under my canine portal. There's a special uh, part you can go called uh, relaxation protocol. Protocol for relaxation. There, you're going to see the steps you can take for this. But let me just break it down a little bit. Number one thing I do is I teach them to go to a place and that when I tell you to go to a place, you have to stay quiet. And then I bring up the time that I give you a reward. Next thing that I do is I throw rewards inside of a crate. I don't close them in it. I throw them inside. I throw treats inside or kibble in this case. I like using kibble a lot more than treats. The dog goes in, eats it, right? I don't close them in. The dog comes out. I act very, very boring. I don't move too much. I don't say anything. I drop food inside the crate. They go back in, right? Next thing I do is I put a toy or something that they love to chew on, something that's really tasty, and I close the door. I don't lock it. I just close it, and I teach them that it's okay for a minute if it closes, right? And that's it. I open it and close it and ask them to go in and out, right? That's the best way to train them. What I'm really trying to do here is I'm trying to get them to acknowledge that being calm, being quiet, staying put in one place is the best way to get me to give them the best rewards. So a few other things to consider would be you do not want to open the crate door if your dog is barking or crying. You don't, right? So when we talk about the Furvo, the Forvo for, for those people out here who don't know what that is, it's a camera that dispenses treats if you're far away from your home. I think it connects through Wi-Fi. It's a big no-no for me. Big no-no. Stop that right away. Do not make any noise. Do not throw any treats at your dog through it. You're rewarding your dog for building anxiety, right? If you want to look at your dog through a camera, that's fine. Don't let it know you're looking at it. It's very confusing to them when you when the dog makes a, a, a sound you don't want for you to talk back to it or for you to reward it. If you are going to correct your dog, again, this is a theme that we're going to start talking about. If you want to correct it, punish your dog, you can't do it through a camera. You have to physically be there, right? So what I would do is once the dog got trained a lot to go in a crate and to get good things and to wait, right, and to stay put while you walk around it, then you could say no for whining. You can you can uh, startle it. You can clap loudly. You can stop loudly. You're teaching it that whenever it does one of these behaviors that are the opposite of what you taught it, that you're going to do one of these things that it doesn't like. That's a great way to go about it. Now, there's some people that don't have time to tr create train a dog. And I hear this a lot. I know a lot of trainers won't approve of this. But it's completely okay to just put a dog in a crate and teach them right that they have to stay quietly while you stay right there next to them before you open the door so that's pretty much the last step and the most important step which is do not open the door unless your dog is sitting calmly waiting for you if you open the door anytime the dog gets excited and cries it learns that the best way and the quickest way to get you to open the door is by crying so i know that's a lot of stuff to think about uh, I hope to be making some more videos talking about this in the future. I know a lot of people are dealing with this kind of stuff, but don't rush it. Don't rush it if you have time, especially if you have like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday to work through it. It takes, for some dogs, being quiet in a crate can take some days. For other dogs, it can take weeks. 
but really want to what you want to do is separate both separate what you do like so we practice staying quiet in one place as you move away from distance and you also want to practice what a no means right so if the dog goes to chomp on you you say no you startle it you tell it to go away and they learn like oh no means don't do this so you apply that first and then you teach that no means the same thing in a crate in a crate i hope that makes sense uh, feel free to ask me any questions below and I look forward to hearing and seeing what has helped you and what hasn't. Thank you.